Welcome folks, thanks for joining us tonight. It is August the 5th, 2025 and tonight we'll be taking a short tour of the lunar surface. Uh, we're going to be diving into some of the wonders of our closest uh, celestial neighbour. So, uh, on this day today, uh, the moon is in its waxing gibbous phase. It is approximately 85% of its surface is illuminated. And that means that most of the moon will be bathed in sunlight tonight. Uh, but the terminator, that line, that boundary between light and shadow, that still provides us with some stunning contrast. And that's perfect for spotting uh, some nice detail on the moon's surface. Uh, you can do this uh, with binoculars or even a small telescope. Now the moon itself is about 398,000 uh, kilometres from Earth. I'm not sure what that is in miles. Uh, it's a bit further than average and uh, making it appear slightly smaller in the sky. So sit back and join me as we take a virtual tour uh, along that Terminator line. We'll uh, look at some features on the line or just uh, that have just come into daylight. So we'll start in the northern regions and work our way south, highlighting some of the key features that are visible tonight. Now each one, each one will tell a story of ancient violence, volcanic, uh, volcanic activity, and uh, reveal some of the moon's turbulent history. Okay, so first up is Sinus Iridium, uh, also known as the Bay of Rainbows. Now this stunning semicircular bay is easy to spot with binoculars as a dark, smooth patch just jutting into the lighter highlands near the Terminator's edge. It's about 260 kilometers in diameter, so that's roughly the distance from New York to Washington DC. It was formed by a massive impact. Uh, probably around 3.9 billion years ago. Now, the original crater was flooded uh, with basaltic lava about 3.2 billion years ago and that create, created its flat mare like floor. Now the depth is relatively shallow about one to two kilometers in places due to the lava fill. It's named the Bay of Rainbows by 17th century astronomer Giovanni Battista Recalling for its arc like shape that sometimes catches iridescent sunlight. It's a poetic nod to the colourful play of light here. Look for the Jura Mountains rimming its northern edge. Now, these rugged peaks they do cast some long shadows tonight and they do emphasise the bay's dramatic entrance from the Sea of Rains. So as we move southward along the Terminator, we come to the brilliant crater Aristarchus. Now this is one of the brightest spots on the moon. It's visible even to the naked eye on a clear night. Um, with binoculars, you will see it as a glaring white dot near the Terminator. Now this crater is about 40 kilometers across and plunges three kilometers deep. It's a relatively young crater estimated at only 450 million years old and was formed by a high velocity asteroid impact that excavated bright fresh material from beneath the lunar surface. Now this explains its dazzling albedo. Now it is named after Aristarchus of Samos, the ancient Greek astronomer who first proposed a heliocentric model of the solar system and that was around 270 years BC. Now it is a fitting tribute to such a visionary thinker. Uh, for telescope users, check out the ray system that radi radi radiates outward. Uh, this is ejecta streaks that stretch hundreds of kilometers and the low sun angle tonight makes the central peak pop in the shadow. Nearby do keep an eye out for Kepler's crater. It's smaller but equally striking. Uh, it's just to the southeast of Aristacaris. 
uh, it measures 31 kilometers in diameter and it's 2.6 kilometers deep. Now Kepler is another impact crater from the Copernican period, likely around 1 to 200 million years old, based on its very sharp rims and fresh rays. Now the formation was a classic hypervelocity collision, so it blasted out bright rays that overlap with those from Aristocaris, and that creates a spectacular display in itself. Now it is named for Johann Kepler, the 17th century German astronomer. Uh, he was famous for his laws of planetary motion. If you do have a telescope, the Terminator's shadow highlights the terrace walls and the central peak. So it's perfect for sketching, photographing or just enjoying the view of the intricate details. So we can go on south uh, and we reach Cassendi. Now this is a large complex crater straddling the Terminator in the southwestern quadrant. Now at 110 kilometers wide and 1.9 kilometers deep, it is visible uh, in binoculars as a dark floored oval with a ruffled rim. Now it's formed by an impact about 3.6 billion years ago during the Imbrian period and its floor was later cracked by, tic tic cracked by tectonic forces and it was partially flooded with lava and that gives it a unique fractured appearance. Now it's named after Pierre Cassendi, a 17th century French philosopher, mathematician and astronomer. Cassendi was an astronomer who observed the transit of Mercury and this crater is a telescope favourite. Do look out for the central peaks and the riddle system on its floor. These grooves were carved by ancient lava flows or subsidence and they cast intriguing shadows under tonight's lighting. And if you go further south you can spot Vuliatis, a well-defined crater that is punching through the rugged highlands near the term Terminator. Now it is 16 kilometers in diameter. It's got steep hills that drop uh, about 3.5 kilometers to the floor. This impact crater does date back to the Erastothean period, approximately one to three billion years ago, when a large meteoroid that slammed into the lunar surface, excavating a deep bowl and ejecting debris that formed the bright rays. It's named for Ishmael Boulay, probably got that wrong, known as Bouliadis, a 17th century French astronomer who refined Kepler's, Kepler's laws. It's a testament to the era's scientific advances. With a telescope, the low angle uh, sunlight does accentuate the central peak and terraced inner walls. And you should notice how the shadows reveal multiple layers from the excavation. And finally, as we near the southern end of our tour, we don't miss the Rupes Rector, the famous straight uh, wall. This isn't a crater, but a striking linear fault scarp that stretches 130 kilometers long, about 240 meters high, and two to three kilometers wide at its base. And it was formed by tectonic stresses as the moon cooled and contracted billions of years ago. It's sheer cliff where one side dropped relative to the other and is best seen with a telescope. Known simply as the Straight Wall in Latin, it was named by early selenographers for its remarkable straight appearance. It's a rare geometric feature on an otherwise chaotic lunar surface. So, thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed our quick tour of the moon. Do like, share, subscribe and comment on your favourite feature.